correct, madam. Yeah, they do. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. <laughs> I really We're having an important conversation. Who are you? We're doing a commercial, actually. Oh. Yes, yeah. For Clementine San Pellegrino. Hmm. If anyone from San Pellegrino is listening to the podcast, uh, I am open to bribery. You can uh, you can send me a case of this, and I will crack one open every single week. Every time you crit. That's called sponsorship, not bribery. Well, it's it's a form of bribery. That's the way we do it. It's stuff. bribery. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I make sure the Pellegrino hands under the table. All right, San Pellegrino, new sponsor. Um, this is Blunders and Dragons. We played Dungeons and Dragons. Here's an update. That's your cue, Skips. Is it? Yep. All right. You want me to use my radio voice? Yeah, definitely. It'd be at my all the time as a radio voice. Previously on Blunders and Dragons, after being ambushed, the party continued the fight in the streets, downing a few more of their masked aggressors until town guards caught light of the confrontation and forced the remaining attackers to flee. The guards, disgusted by the death displayed in the streets, escorted the party back to the Temple of Torm to explain themselves in front of the Knight Commander. The Knight Commander, unsatisfied with the party's claim of self-defense, dismissed the party back to the following egg. While the temple's interrogators processed one of the assailants they caught fleeing the street fight. The group were unceremoniously returned to the inn, which had become full with the evening's crowd. It was in this hustle and bustle that Arius received a quick cautionary warning from the dishwasher. Do not speak so loudly of the undead within the city's walls. Given the brutality of the day's earlier events, a consensus was reached to, re to search the for additional mercenaries to round out the party's numbers. Within the confines of the inn, the group were able to introduce themselves to some interesting characters. A dwarven uh, conjurer, or that's actually wrong, uh, a gnomish wizard, and a half-elf ranger. The excitable wizard told stories of his past days in the towns. He shared that the ships had not been sailing in or out of the harbor on account of the broken lighthouse a great tower with a copper roof. Sailors stuck in town had chosen to try their hand at soldiering rather than remain unemployed. The gnome also indicated that his previous efforts to investigate and indeed repair the lighthouse had been rebuffed by local law enforcement, which raised suspicion of conspiracy. The, pars the party also got to meet Kirby the Benevolent, a preoccupied dwarven... Warlock. Warlock traveling as a Jesticar, passing judgment on those around him, deemed the least offensive character at the <laughs> The group extended him an invitation to join the mercenary troop. After a full night's sleep, a young flower girl named Annabelle greeted them at the inn and requested the band to follow her across the city. The pigtailed cherub led the party to a courtyard at the southern end of the harbor where the Council of Three and several dozen villagers awaited. The council, composed of Wilma, Riscal, and Bernadette, likewise wished to interrogate the group regarding the fate of Gibraltar's campaign, and also seemed eager to incriminate and sentence them for the bloody confrontation within the city streets. The Knight Command arrived in time to interrupt the party's sentencing and cleared them of any wrongdoing, going so far as to label them as heroes. Once more, the troop was followed the Knight Commander to his office, where they were finally compensated for their work reinforcing Gibraltar's caravan. The Knight Commander shed some light as to the contents of the mysterious crates. Each contained a part of what he called the Princess, the supposed daughter of the, of the now ruler of the City of the Dead. Lord Steele noted that if at least one such piece of the Princess were to be examined by his mages, uh, under the employ of the Temple of Torm, it could signify the end of the war. As an added twist, the party was engaged to locate another caravan transporting yet another crate. The trajectory of this one was misdirected deep in the forest north of the harbor. The group headed north and followed the trail of the caravan across undead-ridden forest, accepting Kirby the Benevolent along the way. While following the trail, the troop crossed paths with the Tinker, and for some coin was willing to part with a magical brass locket and a mysterious compass. 
Afterwards, the party finally found the object of their search. Or did they? Dun, dun, dun. That was a fantastic summary. Thank you. Can Before we continue the adventure, can yeah. we have some, some off roleplay talk? I just, we need to work something out, I think. Sure. So this okay. is a question. We're finally going to decide which race we think is the best. OK. Uh, 100 meter dash. The elves. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so this is a question mainly directed at, uh, at Arius. So okay. my question towards Arius would be. Is this in character or out of character? Uh, so this is out of character. OK. Uh, and, and then that will affect the relationship of the characters. Because this would be something that had been worked out before the, the party met each other. Okay. So I'm looking to fill in some backstory in that regard. Okay. So the question is, uh, why would two no-nonsense characters like Kronar and, um, and Melvin allow a, a highly nonsensical bard to travel with them? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I feel like he, like, I'm assuming that everyone was just hired to uh, guard the caravan. Like you guys, perhaps, I would assume that's where everybody met. Because okay. um, yeah, Arius wouldn't have been around before. He, he wouldn't have tolerated him for five minutes. But uh, surviving the attack would would certainly uh, maybe allow them to keep him around at least for a little bit <laughs> until they inevitably turn on him and kill him. Okay, I'm looking and, for something a little bit more congealing than that, if I can. You want, well, you, what, do you, what do you want? Arius's reason for signing up? Uh, no, I'm looking for any type of reason uh, that my character could use uh, to, to not have left you in bed in town, eventually. What do you have on us? I think... Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> hey, if, if that's it, that's it. Or uh, if if Arius had something on you, he would he would just he wouldn't hold it in his pocket. He would use it immediately. He would just ask for your money and leave. No, Ari like he's uh, he's looking for something, um, and he's he's maybe he figures you guys can help him get there or like like his motivations for using like he as far as he's concerned, he's using you guys. Like okay. you guys can absorb some of the damage. He doesn't have to get hurt. He can stay in the back. Maybe maybe Kronar is keeping him around for her her own amusement. That's certainly possible. He Arius also like he backs down immediately once anyone actually challenges him. So as annoying as he is, you know, he can be shut up pretty quickly. Mm, makes um, Kronar feel stronger. <laughs> okay, is that it? Does that uh, is it like a self esteem boost for the two other characters? Well, that's uh, your those are your characters. You tell me. Is Melvin that that type of is he that shallow that he needs someone to? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> so that might that might make for, uh, for a perfectly acceptable reason for Kronar. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to think like did something happen in the initial confrontation where there was a debt owed or. Um, is the reason that Arius is trapped maybe. with the troop. Um, maybe Arius knows why Melvin um, dishonored himself. Is that it? Maybe it traveling worked. with Arius is what has dishonored him. <laughs> <laughs> Got me expelled, as it were. I mean, in the, in the initial battle, uh, Arius, he made himself as useful as he could. Um, he, he also did a lot of, uh, like, he, he sure acted like he did more than, uh, and if you ask him, he'll tell you that he, while well, your back was turned fighting a couple of, of zombies and skeletons, he was single-handedly taking care of things up uh, on the other side of the battle. Yeah, and it's, fully, it's, fully, it's completely possible you would believe that, too. So, I, I can work with that. So, are we going under the assumption that Melvin thinks... That uh, that Arius is is holding up more than his share of the adventuring. I think he does. Okay, I can work with that. All right. Um. So the last thing that happened, as you so eloquently put it already, is you uh, managed to come across uh, what you think might be the location of uh, the the crate you were looking for. Um, so as you guys were like traveling through the forest and avoiding uh, the undead that has been 
crawling through it and avoiding the places of blight and danger, uh, you finally manage to come to a point in the road where you see in front of you uh, a wagon wheel that's just been strewn carelessly in the center of the road. Now, sorry, the wagon, wagon you mean like actual off, like off of an actual wagon, or are you talking about the uh, chocolatey uh, treat, the wagon wheel, the marshmallow uh, chocolate uh, cookie? I'm I'm talking about the marshmallow chocolate cookie concoction, right. and just beyond that, you see a wooden wagon wheel, as right. from a cart, uh, strewn carelessly in the center of the road. Um, and as you approach that wagon wheel, you you notice that uh, the 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 bushes and the trees and the foliage to the side of the road have kind of been um, crushed, as if something has been pulled or dragged or stomped through them. Does it look like it's crate shaped? Uh, well, if you kind of like peek into the the bush, you notice that there's other bits and pieces of wagon that have been, you know, uh, broken off while it was being pulled through this area. It seems pretty obvious what happened. I say okay. we send the bard in head first. Well, as uh, good an idea that is, I, I feel like our uh, our gigantic friend here might be a little bit better uh, at uh, sneaking in and uh, <laughs> being unnoticed. Um, what says Kronar? I'm going to use uh, perception. Yep. To what? Let me just to um to see if whatever went through there. Mm -hmm. It's still really close by. Okay. Why don't you uh, roll? Why don't you roll a perception check? Yeah, I am on my way. Actually, it's more of an invest uh, investigation check, I think. Okay. Yeah. That's that's good too. Let me. Uh, here we go. Where's the thing? There's the thing. Okay. Um, with the twelve, you can you see that the. Uh, the branches and the limbs of the plants that have been uh, crushed haven't quite gone uh, brown at the ends yet, so you think that they have been snapped fairly recently. Hmm. Okay. Well, is it dark? Uh, no, it's still, it's like, I'd say around 4 o'clock in the afternoon at this point. Yeah, so there's not much shadow in... In the bushes there? The shadow is starting to come across now. Okay. Time to set up camp, everybody. Let's turn in. I have dark vision, so does do I see better uh, than... Well, the bush isn't particularly uh, thick in this area, but the trail seems to go back fairly fairly far. Okay. Um, I'm going to use stealth. Okay. And uh, kind of go a few feet in to see if I can't see... Um... See the signs of a creature or something? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if there's a creature sort of waiting for us to ambush us, or if whatever it is is continuing keeping on going. Okay. Um, why don't you roll a stealth check for me then? Yeah. So, what are you going to say? Presumably, there were humans or humanoids yep. on the cart any traces of them anywhere? Any limbs around this wagon wheel? You don't see any around the wagon wheel, no. There's no yeah. arms? I'm hungry. No arms. No traces of blood? No blood. No brown patches? No brown patches. No, no zombie bits? Nothing of the sort. Alright. So how's that stealth check? Um, so you advance into uh, down the trail a little bit. And you kind of peer through uh, the the weeds and the bramble, and you don't see anything. Okay. That looks uh, threatening. To uh, follow me. So are you are you all going to be moving forward stealthily? Uh, no, not I. Okay. I'm I'm just going. I'm bringing the fight to them. So you're clinking, Air clinker clanking. Yeah. yeah Arius will move behind Melvin as stealthily as possible. <laughs> That's excellent, because I have good, a good pace, so whatever triggers is just going to explode behind me anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, um, so you work your way down the path, uh, 
and it kind of goes deeper into the woods till eventually you notice that ahead of you the the uh the bramble and weeds and trees start to part into a clearing and you begin to smell uh smoke i signal everyone to stop and arius keeps going i mean he's not gonna go past but he's gonna keep walking up stand right alongside okay yeah and then i grab arius and toss him into the clearing <laughs> what do we see in yonder clearing? All right, so Arius goes tumbling into the clearing, and uh, a gentle toss, not a not a head over heels kind of deal. Across the clearing, you see uh, a cart that's been toppled over and is on fire. Uh, any people? Um, Arius, you have noticed the uh, legs of uh, a humanoid wearing um, chainmail armor underneath the cart. Uh, okay, is there, is there anyone else around? Like, do I see any immediate threat? No, but you do notice that there is some uh, blood out of the cart, coming up from underneath the cart. Do I see these legs as well? Uh, do you step into the clearing? Ah, uh, sounds like a good opportunity to. Then yes, you do. Excellent. How heavy is this cart? How heavy is the cart? It looks like uh, it looks similar to the cart that you saw when you were uh, first attacked by the undead in the beginning of the the campaign, and it was being pulled by a, a mule at the time. So it's, you know, you you need to roll a strength check to flip it over. I would very much like to go up to this cart and assuming that it's not totally on fire, see if you can get this human out or this pair of legs out. Okay, so why don't well, you? <laughs> while, while you're doing that, Arius is going to... She's checking to see if the boots, his boots are the same size as these uh, legs sticking out. Okay, um, they are, actually. Uh, Melvin, do you want to roll a strength check to see if you can flip I this thing? Yes, I would. All right, go ahead. Uh, it's just straight strength or athletics? Straight strength. Um, you know what? Athletics is fine, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, you... <laughs> Yeah, you, you heave a little bit, and the cart goes uh, flipping over, revealing a pair of legs. Uh, you also notice that the uh, crate, which was underneath the cart, is uh, cracked open fairly significantly, and there's chains kind of strewn about. Um, at that moment, you also begin to hear uh, a rustling that quickly turns into a rumbling in the bushes around you. Everyone, enroll initiative. I'm still in the trees. Okay. Everybody run! You can still roll initiative. That's cool. Arius is running already. He's not going to roll initiative. He's just going to run. Is he actually going to do that? We'll see. Uh, okay, actually, I need, I to, Oop, there need we go. to copy your characters over. Uh, you guys are all at full health. Roll? Yeah, you probably will. Oh, uh, well, I can just if you if you already rolled, I'll just take your roll and put it in. I'm so tickled that I can roll initiative <laughs> inside the app. Big steps, right? Yeah. You can click on buttons and rolls happen for you. Okay, I'm gonna move you guys over to that screen now that I've copied, and not make you do this. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna move. Yeah. Not that guy again. Arius is over here. Oh wait, what about our friend uh, uh, Kirby? Is he just kind of tagging along? With, he, he's uh, uh, yeah, he's hanging out with Kronar. That would make sense. He's quiet. Okay. Um. Roll initiative for Kirby. Uh, Melvin, what's you? What did you roll? It was twelve. Twelve. Okay, you're already in there, Arius. Twelve. Perfect. And Kronar. Twenty-three. All right, you guys are directly initiated. I don't see myself in the turn order. Really? Okay. I'll just yeah. take my word for it. Sure. Yeah, nobody's in the turn order except for uh, Kirby. The malevolent. Let's find out just how malevolent he is. Malevolent? I thought it was benevolent. We got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> should, should I toss uh, toss the dwarf into the clearing? Nobody tosses a dwarf. <laughs> All right. So that was a reference to Lord of the Rings. Did you get that? Oh, I don't think I've seen that. I'm not following now. Mm. 
Is that like the Silmarillion? I've I've read that, but I didn't bother to read anything else. It's like uh, fan fiction for that book. Oh, okay. Yeah, they basically. Is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, he wrote his own fan fiction, his own extremely detailed fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Okay, Kronar, you get the move first. All right. So... You get to fall down the stairs, apparently. <laughs> I dropped. Okay, so I dropped the gummy bear. And it fell onto the floor, and it's a white gummy bear, so I cannot find it. And I think it might have gotten stuck in the wheels of my chair. So I bent oh. down to pick it up, and my headphones tried to fall off. Yeah. That's going to... your dog in. Yeah, find it. that's a future Patrick problem. All right. So, um... Can we not see further than this? This is, the, this is uh, the entirety of what you're able to see. Okay, cool. So, I, um... I'm going to cast a flaming sphere all right right oh, the pinging doesn't work for me they oh, got you, you have to make sure you have the uh select token the select uh function the pointy arrow selected to ping and yet all right we'll try another browser next time okay which one are you pointing at the north one this guy. All right. Do you want to um, I feel draw like I'll it? set my compatriots on fire if I burn the other one. Fair so enough. So I'm, I'm just going to um, basically on top of him cast Flaming Sphere. Okay. Which I think is 2d6 damage. Uh, I'll look it up. But you have to roll a um, strength saving. Dexterity, or right? Dex. I think dex. it's dexterity. Dex, yeah. All right. So he's going to roll that. And he gets a 7, which I believe is not enough. Not enough. So Flaming Sphere is 2d6 fire damage. And uh, so I rolled 4. Okay. Um, Yeah, he takes uh, the damage. And he doesn't even seem to notice that it's happened. But he does turn his gaze to you in the trees and (sighs) utter like a guttural grunt. Um, cool. Would you like to do anything else? Would you like to move? Um, I think I would like to transform into a brown bear. Okay, yeah, I didn't get a token for you yet, so we'll just know you're a bear right now. Yeah. Uh, and do you well, want, and um, if you want to draw your fireball, or do you want me to draw your fireball, I can do that. No, I'm drawing the fireball. I okay. just have to get there. And that's a bonus action to transform into a bear, right? Yeah. Okay. But I can't attack him right now. All right, cool. Um, Arius. You're up. Okay. I say, um, Arius, you handle the one to the north, I'll handle the one to the south. Yeah, uh, you, you got it, chum! <laughs> uh, Arius, so can they, uh, from where Arius is, from where the the, bo- the the crate is underneath the cart, the, the half-flipped-over cart, Yep. can they see that uh, crate from where they are? Yeah, and there's, there's a pretty big uh, crack in it. Mm, mm. So they can see it. Oh, they they, they may, may not be able to see that it's cracked because the cracked part is underneath the cart. But you can tell there's a big crack in it. Okay. Uh huh. Well, Arius is not brave enough to do that. So <laughs> the first thing I was thinking. So he's going to. Uh, there, there. Are they wearing any uh, chainmail by any chance? No. Mm, that's disappointing. It is. Is, is it? They're actually completely nude. They don't oh. even have the tatters of clothing on them anymore. So I mean, is Arius like? Is he? Does he? Would, I mean, he 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 take a take a look. Yeah. Um. It seems that whatever manhood or feel of manhood they had has been necrotized off. Oh, that's but disappointing. I mean, like attached to their belt. There's no belt. No. Perhaps it is the belt. <laughs> it's just a, uh, a gaping opening. Okay, in that case, uh, so the one who's on fire is is looking into the. Um, oh, let's let's be bushes. clear. He's not on fire. He's, He's being... engulfed in flames. Okay. <laughs> so Arius is going to turn to him and and uh, use vicious mockery and and try and uh, just kind of say something along the lines of, uh, "You're not going to take that from." From that thing, are you? Come on, buddy. You can you can go get him unless you're some kind of chump. So you're he's gonna, you're trying he's to get trying to insult him without drawing the attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 
So what, what does that mean I have to do? A wisdom save? Uh, you're going to have to do uh, something. It is a wisdom save. Yes. All right. Let me just quickly look up the stats. I have the page yes. marked over here. Okay. Um, all right. Not very wise. 11. It has to be 13. All right. You succeed in mocking it somehow. Okay. So I heard it's pride. Hopefully not enough to... Uh, it's worth noting, uh, the two damage I did is less than the four it took from the, the fire, so uh, <laughs> so that's that's going to be good. And uh, Ares is going to... Uh, he's going he's gonna to pat Melvin on the back and say, I got this, going north, just like you said, and he's just going to kind of step back a little <laughs> little ways. Okay, um, and w Vicious Mockery does something to it, doesn't it? Yes, it also uh, has disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes okay. before the end of its next turn. Great. Melvin, you're up. You guys rolled. Oh, wow. You guys rolled really well, by the way. Oh no, wait, you're not up. Never mind. You didn't roll that well. It's actually uh, the other thing's turns because they rolled like twenty and eighteen, I think, on their initiative. Um, okay, so the one to the north who uh, is currently standing in a ball of fire uh, sees, Cro uh, yeah, Cronart transform into a huge bear, and it kind of begins to salivate this black Icarus liquid and goes and charges forward towards Cronart. And is going to uh, make an attack at Kronar using this huge, like, massive femur bone looking thing that it pulls, that it's been carrying around. Delicious. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be delicious. Uh, that is a 15 to hit. Oh, my armor class is. Uh, oh, I'm a bear. Um, uh, <laughs> what's your bear's armor class? Um, brown bear? <laughs> Are you a cave bear? Brown bear? Brown bear. Brown bear. Brown bears have an armor class of 11. So that oh, is... No. Am I looking at it right? Yeah, 11. It's 11. 11. Okay. 11. Yeah, so that's going to hit. Uh, so the big uh, honking femur bone goes crashing into you and deals 18 damage. Ouch. So let me... Oops. Let me uh, react. 18, you say? Yep. Yeah. Gosh. Do you have any, uh, when you're in a bear form, do you take reduced damage or anything like that, or? Um, I, I take bear damage to my bear. Your bear so. form. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. I can retaliate, unless my bear has retaliatory powers. I, I how would you retaliate? Oh, I'd scratch him a good one right across his face. Okay, you have to wait on your turn for that. Yeah. Um, the one that came from the other side of uh, the toppled over crate uh, kind of stomps over to uh, the chain and picks it up and then starts whipping, whipping it around uh, rather quickly and it's going to make an attack on, on Melvin with uh, the chain. Not this again. And that's going to be an 18 to hit. That hits. All right. Uh, and that's going to be... 10 damage, and you feel the chain kind of wrap its links around you as that happens. Don't don't like it. Do you want me to cast Heat Metal? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a fantastic idea. Does that mean that I'm, from a status effect point of view, am I ensnared? Uh, yes. That's precisely what it means. All right, it's Kirby's the turn, and he goes. He says, um, "Such demonic creatures! Something is wrong with this forest." And he kind of uh, will look at the giant ogre, uh, undead ogre that's attacking Kronar, and is going to cast um, a spell. Uh, okay, so the creature is going to make a Wisdom saving throw. And will fail. Um, and let me just see if I understand this cor correctly before I go too much further. But I think he's going to try and attack his friend. They should hug and wrap themselves in metal so that uh, Arius can heat metal them to death. That would be a good tactic. Okay, 
yeah, so Cronar kind of uh, nods towards the other the other uh, undead hulking beast uh, and rather than growling at uh, the bear, the 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 ogre raises its femur and goes at the other ogre. Melvin. As a bonus action, I would like to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. And then I would like to make my way out of these chains. Now, is that a check or is that an action? That would be a strength check. Let's see what I can do. Straight strength or athletics? Athletics. No? Yeah, you kind of... Um... Like, pull your arms out and manage to shed the chains. You can still make an action. Yeah? Full action? Yep. I am going to move on to that fella. And I am going to say, as soon as I get the right cursor... Finally, a worthy foe! I look forward to seeing you fall on the battlefield! And that I attack with Hildy. All right. The thing I like to do. Did you ever clean Tildy? Uh, that hits. Yeah, did you ever clean Hildy? Uh, I like to think that it would be part of my uh, training as I'm heading off to bed and getting up in the morning that my tools are always well asked. <laughs> yeah, you never really explicitly said that though. I think it's still covered do, in the fecal matter. Do we want to get into this minutiae? <laughs> you know, because I can go there. I mean, you may not enjoy the recommendation. <laughs> Fair enough. If if it's still covered in the fecal matter, can we get some extra gross out damage? Or would this thing not be grossed out by? <laughs> I, I think this dead thing's gonna get septicemia now. Yeah, now we just gotta sit back, wait a couple months and uh Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be more dead. It'll be deader. Alright, so that's gonna do uh sixteen damage, unless you wanna do anything else. I think that's gonna be my turn. Alright. Um the creature, you, you wield uh, Hildy and kind of swing it into... What kind of weapon is this again? Uh, a great axe. Great right, axe. yeah. You, wield, you uh, swing the blade deeply into its stomach and uh, um, intestines and black bile come flowing out of it. Sure, show me more of what you can do. Cronar, what can you do? Uh, Cronar, as her... First bonus action. Um, at the beginning of your turn, Kirby turns to you and says, Leave this one alone. Oh, yeah. Um, I think my fireball can go this far. It's about 30 feet. Anyway, Cronar, the bear. Yep. The bear barbarian. Lifts her mighty paws and swoops the flaming sphere into the other gross giant thing. I like to imagine this giant bear like stands on its back legs like some sort of circus bear <laughs> and like wheel waves its paws around <laughs> like it's controlling the elements. Can it also like be bouncing on a ball? Circus bear? Yeah, it's, and it's bouncing on a bear. Alright, so the... On it's, a bear? It's bouncing on another <laughs> smaller bear? Yeah. Uh, it makes a 14 a reflex save against the fireball, which I think is probably enough, right? Uh, is it a 12? Yeah, I think that's enough. So that's cool. Meanwhile, um, I guess I'm leaving that one alone. I charge forward. Okay. Barely touching the ground. Barely. <laughs> yes. And uh, oh, it, I mean, it slammed into it, so it's, it's kind of here. And uh, do a combo, biting and clawing attack. All right. Which, uh, if someone has their book, they can tell me my They're damn. both plus five to hit. Yep. Sorry, what? What plus five? They're both plus five to hit. So make your make your bite attack first. Okay. Now you just saw what came out of this beast. Do you want to slip that up? <laughs> How's that going? Huh? Fifteen. Okay, there it is. And you want and make your claw attack at the same time. So just hit. Up on the the arrows, there you go. Yeah, those both hit. So your bite attack is one d eight plus four, and your claw attack is two d six plus four. Yeah, plus bear bile. Plus bear bile. 
Uh, so that's a 12 and... Eight plus 4 and 1d6 plus... 2d6 two two plus 4. Mm. All right. All right, that's a whole lot of damage. Yeah, so um, Kronar the bear comes bursting out of the the bushes and just goes leaping into this gigantic uh, creature and fangs and claws just go gashing into it and you see uh, the ribs on its side are now clearly exposed and it's just leaking and seeping all sorts of disgusting things. Arius, what are you doing? Oh, I move back a little bit too. Um, okay, if you move back, it's going to get an attack, a chance to attack you. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, I don't like that. I forget that. All right. You can you can rotate around it while still seeing one square within it. Yep. But not retreat. Oh, yeah. That's that's kind of. I just wanted to get out of the way of that other one. That's coming. Yeah, that's fine. You can go there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see here. You're trying to, to fly us to death. Now I'm trying to find a way to like. Okay, so for fairy fire, um, it says uh, any creature in the area when the spell is cast uh, has to succeed on a dex throw. Are you going to include my my best friends in this? Absolutely, I am. Yeah, I figured you would, like a coward would do. <laughs> you mean Arius? You're the guy in the well, bushes. Uh, let's see. It's the same way I can't use Entangle. Well, no one cares about Kirby. So, if I... Actually, center... I quite like him. He's probably <laughs> in my top three party members. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the self-loathing you've got is really going to drag you down. <laughs> so, if it's targeted uh, right here... Uh, where I've been uh, kind of starting from here, right there. Yep. Uh, would that affect uh, the creature and only... Uh... You said 30 feet? It's 20. 20 feet. So from here, you would hit Kirby, and you would also hit the edge of the other creature. So it, the creature would be affected? Yep. But not anyone else? Correct. Then uh, I'm going to cast Fairy Fire right from right there. And how does that look? Uh, hot pink once again. All right, the creatures are illuminated stars. like a classy strip club. They well, sign. they do get a chance to succeed on a deck save. All right, uh, let's start with Kirby. Let me just quickly remember what his stats are. Um, I shouldn't have closed his window. Kirby has a no bonus to dexterity. All right, so Kirby gets a. 13? Yeah, 13. Okay, so he fails. Uh, the first uh, undead creature gets negative one, and the second one gets one, so they both fail as well. Okay, so they all are going to uh, have... Uh, uh, anyone who attacks them is going to have uh, advantage. Okay. Against them. You hear Kirby like uh, mutter a curse from the bushes. Oh, sorry, Kerbs. Didn't see you there. <laughs> Blasted bird! I saw him the whole time. So, uh, and so Aries is gonna. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. If you remember, Kirby only said that I wasn't guilty. <laughs> That's true. That's, that true. That's very true. Uh, uh, so, Aries is also gonna sneak a peek at the at the crate. It hasn't uh, changed. Nothing. No cracks are worsening at all. Nope. The crate's just sitting there. Okay, then uh, Arius is going to kind of, he's going to cheer on his uh, good friend Melvin, who took a, a nice punch, and he's going to inspire him by uh, giving him, uh, maybe he'll recite a poem about uh, some brave hero who was once beaten to death by two giant creatures in the woods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to hear more about this poem. I would love, yeah. Count. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not a rhyming poem. It's just yeah. kind of like a, ram it's more of an essay. It's about this uh, wonderful, brave... Uh, fella who went off in the woods Stop it, Bard! Him. You hear Kirby yell from the bushes. Hey, it's a, it's a classic piece of literature, but... Uh, Not now! Alright, sorry you're glowing pink. <laughs> okay. Um, the Maybe a limerick would do next time. <laughs> uh, the gigantic uh, undead creature that's standing next to Kirby that has this crown of thorns just digging into its uh, skull... Uh, growls in agony and stomps over to the other to his uh, 
his friend. Mm, or he's in the fire now. He has his, to make a dex. His former friend, and he's going to make a dex saving throw before he does that. Um, and he fails, which means he takes damage. Yeah, he takes two d6s, I think. All right. So that's six damage. And he also gets to make a wisdom saving throw to see if he's no longer controlled by this thing. Uh, because I just hit it? And he isn't. Should we deal with the order of that? Is mine supposed to be at the end of his turn? Um, I believe so. All right. So he'll make an attack, and then on the end of his turn, he'll fail that. Uh, so he goes and swings mightily with his uh, gigantic femur. And, like, you're looking at this thing, and it probably comes from something that's bigger than a horse. Okay, that's annoying. I can't open up the token. Okay. That's 21 to hit, which will hit Can you roll easily. it again? Because he has advantage, and maybe he'll critical. Sure. Nope. Can I use a lower roll? Uh, <laughs> yeah, advantage means it's, it's up to you which one you want. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's GM advantage, then? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right, he's going to mm -hmm. crack this thing over the head and deal 15 damage to it. Um, the creature is kind of looking uh, a little bit wobblier, but you still don't think you want to mess with it. Uh, it now takes the damage and is no longer under the effects of Crown of Madness. The other ogre kind of like rears its head over and goes... <laughs> Uh, in disgust with uh, the other thing, but is going to continue trying to bash uh, Melvin with the chain, um, which we need to look up again. Is that like a ranged weapon that this... Effectively, yeah. Does that mean he's got a disadvantage swing at a guy point blank with the chain? Um, Some type of penalty? Not if he, not if he garrots you with it. No, I don't think so. He, he kind of just has it in his fist now, and he's essentially trying to bash you with his fist. Okay. Uh, which means it's actually a melee weapon. So, eight is definitely a miss. Yeah. He seems like he's, like, with the blood coming out of his gut and the side that's completely torn open by the bear, he seems like he, he's having a hard time controlling all his limbs. Um. Delicious. Uh, Kirby the Malevolent, um, sends, let me check this real quick. Are you kidding me? Okay, no. He sends this purplish, uh, purplish blast of uh, force out from the bushes where he's he's hanging out, and it goes uh, cracking into this thing, dealing some damage. Which one? Which the thing? one who he. The one closest to him. Okay. Um. And he says, "Blasted druid, what are you doing?" Actually, I think you get the roll damage for this guy, too, who's also in the fire. Don't you, uh... Yeah, if it Werner? ends its turn, yeah. Yeah, but he hasn't had his turn yet, again. Yeah, he has. Oh, he did? Yep. Okay. In that case... Okay. Can you also do damage to Melvin, just for fun? Sure. No, he's not within five. Yeah, but, I mean, I'd want Melvin to, to catch fire. All right, Melvin, you're up. Am I? This is a glorious battle! I look forward to seeing you downed and being victorious over your corpse on the battlefield. And I swing Tilty again. At the same old undead zombie ogre. Um, actually, a quick question about the battlefield. Sure. Is this crate held down by chains in the same way that the last one was? Not at all. It's just sitting on the grass. And the chains just have been broken off. Chilling. Chilling. Okay. And what would you say is the... Uh, perforation level of the one we've been attacking. Um, is it highly perforated? Highly perforated. Alright. Then swing hard and swing true. Yep, that's enough. That's a crit too, isn't it? It is. Alright, so... Which, which one is it? Sorry? You rolled the critical hit? Okay, so the first one was crit. Yep. Good. And you're rolling with advantage anyway, so... 2d12 and I got 4? That is pitiful. That is kind of sad. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add to that? Uh, I'm just going to be happy about it. <laughs> Alright. Um, the ogre sounds like. Yeah, you, you slash again, and this thing is nearly cleaved in half, but somehow it's managing to remain on its feet. 
And uh, rather than being able... Hold on. Hold on. Okay. This is important. Because I have great weapon proficiency, yep. anytime I roll a 1 or a 2, I get to re-roll. On damage or on attack? On damage. That well, means that... I get to re-roll two of these 1d12s. Yes, you do. Both my damage and my additional damage. Correct. Because otherwise... I'll subtract two from whatever you roll. Okay, so this is going to be my normal damage. Okay. And this is going to be that one crit damage. Wow. All right, so that's 19 more damage. Um, or no, 18 more damage. Uh, so rather than almost cleaving this thing in two, you manage to completely cleave it in half, and it kind of tries to roar, but Icker just fills its throat as it crumbles to the ground, uh, kind of grasping feebly at nothing. Good effort, I say. Um, and oh, but hang on, move. just one second. Okay. Uh, okay, it's going to be really hard to do this, but... Are you going to cut it in half? Yeah, you just cut it in half, and it begins, it stops twitching. Okay, you can move. Oh, you stop twitching, you stop streaming the... Uh... <laughs> That's correct. Everyone go home. No, no, stay, and subscribe. <laughs> and then I'll move over one square to this... Gentlemen, lovely. No, Watch the fire, friend. Oh, yeah, that's, not, that's not that's your right. foot. Oh can, man, can I can I navigate in some way? Yeah, yeah, you can work your way yeah. around. You Always watching out for you, with. buddy. Same team, Arius. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Arius is the only character who's on the same team as the GM. Okay, that's that's the turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Kronar. Uh. Well, seeing this giant creature split in half before her, she lets out a guttural yell. <laughs> Very bear-like. Yeah. And then there's like spittle everywhere. <laughs> and uh, glumps over to this one. Okay. Majestic bear fat flowing. And uh, goes straight for the arm. Yep. Teeth right in there. And then arms... Uh, our paws scrabbling at the sides trying to rip that arm right off. All right. Because it looks delicious. If you roll maximum damage on one of your hits, then I'll allow it to come off. Uh, 1d20 plus... I think it was 5, wasn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay, that's a 20. That hits. And one more of those. 21. That also hits. Okay. Roll some damage. So now it's 2d6. Are you doing fight or are you doing claws? Claws are 2d6 plus 4. I think I'm doing both, but hey, let's let's start with the... Okay, that's 8 damage, and the bite is uh, 1d8 plus 4. <coughs> Alright. Um, that's... You can skip taking a ration today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, are you, are you are you going to chew this up and, and swallow it, or is the bear going to spit it out? Your your claws go raking into this creature's arms, and your fangs sink deeply into its wrists, just slashing and and biting and chomping and and mawing away at it. But uh, and gnawing and gnawing. But the creature, uh, being of the undead uh, family doesn't even seem to be bothered by the fact that you're doing that. Its arm is hanging on by uh, very few tendons now, but it's still wielding this massive club without too much difficulty. Anything else? Um, I slam the fireball into it again as okay. my bonus. Uh, it's going to only take damage at the end of its turn. Oh, this is my um, bonus attack where I slam the fireball into people for... Yeah, I think I read that again, though, and it only takes damage at the end of its turn, other than maybe the turn you cast it on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what other kind of bonus action can I do here? What do we get? Mm. I guess a cantrip's not a bonus. That's an action. Yep, that'd be an action. Uh, in that case, I spit out the flesh of its wrist. Okay. And just... Nicely done. Like. All right. It goes that back at your response, and then it's Arius. Oh, didn't turn. I have advantage? Yes, you did. Uh, you can roll uh, 1d20 plus 5 two more times to see if either of those crit. 
Okay. Sorry. It's just so fun. Nope. Mm -hmm. And no. All right. Arius. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, so <laughs> this thing looks it's taken a, a fair bit of damage and uh, its arm is hanging off. Its arm is getting is getting pretty loose. Okay. Well, Arius is confident enough that uh, that means it's uh, it's in some pretty serious trouble. So he's actually going to come right on up. Wow. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna give uh, his uh, good buddy Melvin a thumbs up. He's he, Arius yeah. feels like he can uh, really take credit for some uh, <laughs> for helping out here. He's gonna he's gonna kind of stand on his uh, his very tippy toes, and he's just gonna he's gonna cast uh, dissonant whispers on this fella. All right. Who's going to have to make a wisdom save? That's it. Arius, the killing blow is yours. He fails. He sure does. So let me roll some damage. I think I've got this set up. All right. And does that mean he has disadvantage on his? Oh, oh he it, takes damage. Okay, I see. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I should have the uh, AC in there. I don't think it. Uh, <laughs> no. I think I've got that wrong. Uh, it's uh, what is it? It is three d six. Okay. Uh, psychic damage. Wow. All right. Okay. It brings its massive hands up to its head, and it just goes in pain as it kind of writhes under the uh, psychic assault. It's also going to have to immediately use uh, its uh, speed to get as far away as it can. Wow. So it's going to be taking a whole lot of uh, opportunity attacks here. I mean, if we decide to take them. You don't know. It's true. Maybe we're going to spare it. All right, can it, and it can do it now. All right, so it's going to move to here. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to take an? Arius is gonna. He's gonna calmly wait. See if anyone else wants to, to uh, take a swing. Of course. Then go for it. Let me see. What would be appropriate? Of course. Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit. You managed to uh, cut into its back leg as it's running away. Um, Kronar, are you gonna do a bite attack or a claw attack? Actually, I rolled a two on that, so let me re-roll the damage. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> Brutal. Because it doesn't announce two, only once. All Not right. Much better, but so there you I, go. I add two more damage eight. to that. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna bite the hell out of it. I oh, mean, right. claw the hell out of it. Yeah. yeah, claw's probably your best bet. Yeah. Roll the hit. Plus five. Oh, yeah, I guess I'll roll the hit instead of just damage. That'd be, that'd I mean, cool. you'll probably hit it because you have advantage on it. It's Roll again. Okay, yeah, you'll do nine damage to it. Um, and you manage to rake your claws against its arm once more, and the arm uh, seems to lose its strength, and the club drops to the ground. Okay, Arius is also going to uh, swing his rapier. Okay. At it, uh, he's not good with it, but uh, you know he's going to give it a shot. When in Rome, yeah, uh, you managed to, to spear him with it as it, he's moving away. Okay, he looks like uh, he, he, when, when he when kind of uh, stabbing. He looks like someone trying to uh, uh, skewer some meat on a kebab, but like he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's trying to like shove the rapier right through him. He seems surprised that it doesn't go right through like butter. <laughs> yeah, it kind of bends a little bit and then pushes itself in. Um, so does this thing, uh, on its own turn, get a chance to save, or what's the deal with, uh, Dissonant Whispers? No, it's, uh, free to do whatever it wants now. Okay, it kind of, uh, stops at the edge of the map, and, um, shakes its head a little bit and frees itself of, of, uh, the fear it temporarily held, and yells, <laughs> and comes charging back towards, towards Kronar. Arius uh, kind of says, uh-oh. I thought I was dead. I'm going to sky over a little bit. Okay. Uh, he's going to attack Kronar now. Um, that is a 14 to hit, which is a hit against the bear, I believe. It is a hit against the bear. Okay, and he doesn't have his club anymore, so he's going to do slightly less damage. So let's make that uh, 2d8. 11 damage. Its fist comes crushing into the side of the bear. It kind of grabs a fistful of fur as it does so and pulls it back out. Ouch. Is that enough to 
relieve you of your bear form? Sure isn't. Still got five bitches. All right. Is that the end of its turn? It's the end of its turn. It's going to have to make a deck save against my fireball. Oh, oh yes, it will. That fireball is doing work. Uh, ten. I believe that's a failure. It sure is. Nine damage. Okay. Um, this thing is looking terrible. It has singe marks on it. It's missing an arm. There's big globs of black goop billowing and puffing out of it. Uh, it has, like, claw marks across its face from where it was re holding its head during the psychic assault that uh, Arius unleashed upon it. Uh, and Melvin um, comes stepping up to it and says, I'll end this now! That's not my voice. Uh, Melvin. Um, what's his name? Kirby. Kirby. And uh, another ball of purple force goes crushing into it, but it still remains standing. Melvin. I would like to still go to a quarry that isn't currently going to be on fire. Where where would that be? Uh, you probably have to run over to this side. All right, fair enough. So I meander over here. Yeah, that's good. You walk confidently. I do. I say, you fought well, but now the victory will be ours. All right. Tell me how you kill this thing. I, uh, I give him a sash. I start with his neck, and I just keep going down on a diagonal until I reach the bottom of this ribcage. Okay, so you kind of swing your axe easily over your shoulder a couple of times in one hand. And then, with both hands, come tearing through it, blade cutting deep and just splitting this thing's front completely open. Maggots and pus and black blood come pooling out of it, and it just collapses over, nearly on top of you. But you manage to push it aside with your axe as it falls. And you hear a last... And you are now out of initiative.